click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this video we are going to see triggering methods of SCR. Triggering methods are nothing but turning on methods of an SCR. SCR can be turned on in a different way and which are those different way that we are going to study in today's video. So friends, let's see which are the different methods and how these methods can be impl implemented to turn on an SCR. Now first method is by raising the temperature that is also known as a thermal. Basically when you want SCR to be on, you need to have anode to cathode current, maximum anode to cathode current. If you have a maximum anode to cathode current, that means your SCR will be in a turn on or it will be in a forward conducting mode. Now for that the first method is by raising the temperature which is also known as a thermal triggering method. Second one is by focusing light. When it comes to the light it is also known as a optical triggering. Third method is a forward voltage triggering. By increasing the forward voltage also you can turn on SCR. Fourth one is dV by dt triggering. So basically it is associated with the rate of change of voltage over a time. So at what rate you are changing a voltage and which voltage we'll see in that particular method. Fifth one is a gate triggering. Gate triggering is a very important method and which is generally used method. It is mostly used method to turn on SCR. So we'll see this methods one by one how they are utilized, how they are implemented to turn on SCR easily. So let's start with the first method that is a temperature or thermal triggering. Now when we have studied the VI characteristics of SCR, what we have studied is that whenever there is a no voltage uh, given to the SCR or you can say the very small amount of voltage is present, the SCR will not turn on but it will remain either in a reverse blocking state or it will be remain in a forward blocking state. But in those two states, there is a small amount of current you can see which is flowing through the device and we have named that small amount of current as either a reverse leakage current or a forward leakage current, correct? Now this leakage current is present inside a device due to thermally internally generated carriers. These carriers are nothing but electrons and whole pairs and due to the movement of this minority carriers, this electron and whole pairs, there is a flow of electrons takes place. Now as I said, turning on of a SCR is very easy. Why it is very easy? The first reason is here in a thermal triggering. Thermal triggering is some, somewhere associated with the temperature of a junction. So we have a three, three junctions in SCR, junction 1, junction 2 and junction 3. And the state of the junction that is whether they are reversed bias or forward bias, our SCR will be in either in a on state or it will be in a off state. So when the temperature at the junction increases, due to the increase in a temperature, thermally generated carrier also increase. The electron hole pair near the junction also increase and due to the increase in a temperature and increase in a carrier eventually the leakage current will also increase within a device and due to the increase in a leakage current your SCR may turn on because what you need to have to turn on your SCR is that the maximum anode to cathode current if I draw the diagram of SCR so here I have anode cathode and I have gate terminal. So this current which is flowing from anode to cathode is increased in a sufficient amount then your SCR will be turned on. So in first method by increasing the junction temperature you can increase the number of carriers that is electron hole pair generated near the junction and due to this thermally generated carriers, there can be a flow of current. There is an increase of a current that is a leakage current and due to the increased leakage current, your SCR may turn on. Now let's see what is optical triggering. The second method is by focusing light. Now when we have studied LED and laser, we have studied that how light can be generated. So 
Uh, LED is nothing but it is a normal PN junction diode. Only what we have used as a semiconductor material is a different to have the light generation. So LED is basically optical source which is generate a light from the electric signal. So it is a conversion of electrons to photons. That means you already know there is a possibility of the conversion of an electrons uh, into a photons in a semiconductor device. Now the same concept you can see you can apply to turn on an SCR. Now as I said if temperature increase the carrier generated similarly if with a high intensity if you strike if high intensity of light high intensity light strike the junction of SCRs then due to the light intensity or the light falling on the device the electron hole pair can be generated. Now here look at the detector. What happens in a detector due to photon strike on a depletion region of a detector area it forms electron and hole pair and this electron and hole pairs are start moving towards the p type and n type material and due to the movement of this electron hole pair there is an electric flow that is how the photon to electron conversion takes place correct now if you strike a photon if you strike a light on the scr junction the similar things can happen because it is also a pn junction you are having a three different junction and those junctions are nothing but they are pn junction so at a junction if you are striking a photon due to the electric field present near the junction your photons will be converted back to the electron and hole pair and due to the movement of electron and hole pair there is an increase in a leakage current and again if there is an increase in a leakage current your SCR may turn on that is also one of the triggering methods so your optical triggering is can also be used as a triggering method to turn on the SCR but these two methods are not desirable methods because as I said accidentally if SCR turn on then it can be a dangerous for that particular circuit it can be dangerous for that particular device so these two methods are always be avoided now next method is forward voltage triggering we have seen if the forward voltage increase that is VAK forward voltage is nothing but it is a VAK that is a voltage across anode to cathode it's a VAK correct now if you sufficiently increase the voltage across anode to cathode at one point the breakdown can happen and due to the breakdown there can be increase in a current through SCR. If you remember the forward blocking state and forward conducting state that is the first quadrant of VI characteristic of SCR there you can see if your voltage across anode to cathode reaches the level VBO that is a breakover voltage. So once your anode to cathode voltage exceed of VBO, your voltage will get reduced at the same time. Your current will increase in a sufficiently manner so that your SCR will enter in a conducting mode, forward conducting mode. So this method can also be used as a triggering method for an SCR. But here, what is the problem is that you are having, you are using a more voltage to turn on the SCR and due to having a more voltage, your power dissipation will be more. So now next method, let's see the next method which is a DV by DT triggering method. Now as I said, DV by DT, this method is associated with the rate of change of voltage over a time. Here you can clearly see it is a rate of change of voltage over a time. That means if my SCR is forward bias and if I suddenly provide a high voltage, high VAK voltage across the SCR when the gate terminal is open at that time dV by dt is a maximum that is a rate of change of voltage is maximum. When we have studied the VI characteristics what we have seen we are providing a VAK slowly from minimum that is zero value to a maximum and we are observing what is the current uh, changes or current whether increase or decrease while you are increasing the VAK but all of sudden if you are providing a positive voltage to the SCR then there will be large amount of current can be flow through SCR and 
that is nothing but the dv by dt triggering that means you are changing the rate of change of voltage over a time and this dv by dt is maximum then your scr will be turned on without gate current so this is also one of the method now as i said gate triggering method is the most important method and it is a mostly used method to turn on the scr here also in gate triggering also we have a different types so we'll see what are these different types of gate triggering in the upcoming video so i hope you have understood what is a thermal triggering what is a optical triggering what is a forward voltage triggering and what is a dv by dt triggering these are all four method can be used to turn on scr but there are some disadvantage associated with the all method so the final method that is a gate triggering is always used to trigger the scr on so in the next video let's see what are these types of the gate triggering and how uh, exactly this method can be implemented so that my scr will be easily turned on thank you for watching this video stay tuned to ekeda do subscribe to ekeda thank you